reverse charging patents keep coming back to back iPhones mm. iPhone reverse charging is that not a thing that we have yet uh it charges the airpods mm -hmm. so why do we need new patents then well does it charge the phone so phone to phone yeah easy Talking phone to phone charging, it's a lot of heat. Uh -huh. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. I think. I feel like it's been done. Maybe not by Apple. Uh, share a little power. Tap them together. Okay. A patent doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. Uh -huh. A new Apple patent application for iPhone reverse charging has been published today, further boosting speculation about when the Cupertino company will finally offer the wireless power sharing capability. The application describes another possible application. The application describes another possible application. Mm. You see how that went there, Will? Getting their ducks in a row. The application describes a possible application. Mm. The patent application describes an application. Yeah, I got it. I don't. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you do because I don't. I'm kidding. For the technology, placing two iPhones back to back. Okay, well, I see what you're doing now. Back to back. Apple's failure to implement the feature following the abandonment of air power once led tech reviewer M. Brandon Lee to quip, sounds like all Apple can charge is your credit card. Mm. Phew, shots fired. <laughs> Tell me about this air power thing. Don't we have something going on with that? Yeah, we do. Okay. We have the air power. So we should... have the power. Heat man? So Tim never put it out in the market, but he decided to send it to us? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know we had a relationship. to you. I thought our relationship was the opposite, actually. This is news to me. No. There was a, a whole basket of uh, fruit in there as well. Oh, okay. So that's what did it? And right in there is the air power. Wow, air power hidden inside of a fruit basket. Funny thing is, he's not joking, guys. Eventually, we're going to show you this uh, Apple air power, the mysterious and rare, the rarest of Apple products, the air power, which never happened. Uh, I don't mind. Okay, charge the phone with the phone. I don't know how often I would use it. Uh -huh. It's going to be slow and hot. In a pinch, okay, in a pinch, we tap them together. Um, it's cool tech, but I think it's one of those ones that's mostly a cool demo. And in my life, at least, I wouldn't be using it that often. But maybe my life is boring. Maybe other people's lives, they're tapping and they're touching. There you go. I'm so, sure it's like... Congrats to all... Congrats to those people. Okay. Yeah. Much needed. That are tapping and touching. Congrats. Oh, Google's shutting down Stadia. That's right. That's news. As of today, that's uh, brand new, breaking news. You're probably going to get this clip out ASAP, I would assume. Yeah. If I was a guy like you with a job like this, I would probably get that out. Yeah. Shutting down Stadia. Uh-huh. I don't know. Finish talking. I want to get this clip yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Oh, man. I had high hopes for Stadia, like... Early on, Google, streaming. I actually even played. I'm going to move around a lot today, all right, Will? Sure. So you, bet, you better be ready for my... I could no, go all the way over don't here. Don't do that. No, listen. Don't do that. Listen, man. I'm a one-man show here. I was playing I was team. playing Cyberpunk on Stadia for like 15 minutes or half an hour or something. When it was super buggy. When it first launched. It was buggy right? on consoles and elsewhere, but on Stadia, it was smooth sailing. Yeah. Which was cool, and everyone was pumped for this Hot Wheels game coming up over here. Game of the Year edition. I don't know, man. Game streaming, I love the idea. You, you, you want to see it happen in one way or another. You want to see gaming become more like how we consume other content. Yeah. But it just... I don't know what the complications, difficulty, you know, in the case of Stadia, they were going to make games. They were looking at buying studios and then they're like, what are we thinking? This stuff is hard. And they're like, games are hard. Mm. They, they just put it away. And, and then uh, there, were, there were whisperings going on, which now led to this. 
the official um, shutdown and refunds for people as well. So if you have a, quite a library or something, I guess you're getting a refund. We're grateful to the dedicated Stadia players that have been with us from the start. We'll be refunding all Stadia hardware purchases made through the Google Store and all game and add-on content purchases made through the Stadia Store. Players will continue to have access to their game's library and play through January 18th, so after the holidays, so they can complete final play sessions. We expect to have the majority of refunds completed by mid-January 2023. More details for players on the process on our help center. The underlying technology platform that powers Stadia has been proven at scale and transcends gaming. We see clear opportunities to apply this technology across, across other parts of Google, like YouTube, Google Play, and our augmented reality efforts. Yeah, do they just bring games to YouTube? Is, does it just become a section of YouTube based on this technology? Yeah, they should. Netflix is all about games and maybe everything should just be under one umbrella you log in to watch your favorite videos you log in to watch lou later and they're like hey play this game the lou later game i remember like a concept way back when they first announced stadia where it's like you watch the assassin's creed um trailer and then you play it on youtube and you start like right away streaming. without loading yeah yeah that that could be a thing there was all types of fun possibilities here will all types of uh potential and it just didn't go that way. You had the controller. I remember playing with some early Google prototypes back in I.O. days when I was going over to San Francisco. I feel like, I, feel like a lifetime ago. I was going over there. With uh, Google Glass? I was going over there. Yeah. I was... Uh, when you were a hot shot? I, I might have been a hot shot. I landed in the airport, airport over there. Yeah. I, uh, I got the sushi over there. Mm-hmm. I uh, I had the I had the Thai food over there. Delicious. Um, I had a spicy one. Okay. And then I had a. I can't even remember what type of beer it was, because it was it was also a Thai beer, famous Thai beer. I was having with that. Okay. Uh, and then I went to the, their events and and I got my hands on this thing and it might be sitting. It might have been. You know what it was? Huh? Do you want to know what it was? It was the, that one right there. Yeah, Singa. this one's very... Yeah, uh, it was that one right there. That's what I was popular. drinking. Or you know what? I might have been drinking the Tiger one, or that might be at the local Thai place. I can't keep it together. Okay, yeah. What I'm drinking over They're here. They're all delicious. But I, I, I'm a proponent when you go to those type of restaurants, like a a, 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 a restaurant from with food from a different part of the world, you got to also have the beer from a different part of the world. Yeah. It's a big deal. So, oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started on this guy right here. The Korean beer, Max, all malt beer. Yeah. I like the guy on the left by, by the name of Max Beer. You see this? Uh-huh. You didn't expect to find that when you got your Googling going. Yeah. When you got Googling, you didn't expect that to happen. Is he the creator of Max? No, he's not the creator of Max. Come on, this guy. Oh, okay. A journalist, a Marxist. A, a Marxist <laughs> journalist, economist, and historian. Beer is most remembered as an early writer on the topic of imperialism. Oh, okay. I, well, listen. All right. You can tell. Let's not go there. We're going there. Let's uh, go. That's the whole. Um, there's another athlete by the name of Max Beer who was a long-distance runner. People didn't know that. Okay. And uh, you also have an Austrian, Max Joseph Beer, who was a composer. Mm. So listen, well, you never know what you're going to find out on this show, but uh, I do uh, every so often. I, I, I go out to San Francisco. I have a little bit of food. Okay. And sometimes I go to a Google I.O. And sometimes I get my hands on the early prototype. And then sometimes Google gets mad at me about that. They say, what are you doing with, what are you doing with all this? Yeah. Don't do that. So, but the one thing about Google, and I know everyone, we're all lamenting the situation with Stadia. One thing about Google, they never been bothered putting things to rest. Killed by Google.com actually has a wonderful 274 items on this page. Man, they did not wait for Stadia. They did not wait for Stadia to be flushed in four months, January, 2023. Google Stadia was a cloud gaming service combining a Wi-Fi gaming controller and allowed users to stream gameplay through web browsers, TV, mobile apps, and Chromecast. Three years old upon the time of death. You can see Google Hangouts, Google Currents. I remember that. Wow. YouTube Originals, obviously. YouTube Go. So many things have come and gone. And, and yeah, Google is not apprehensive about uh, what Google Plus. Remember Google Plus? Oh, yeah. The Facebook so, killer. They've never been worried about putting things down when it's not working out 
They put it down. Yeah. And that's what they did over here. I think the, the, the crappy part here is that gaming is one of those areas where people, there's been consolidation. And I, I mean, some of this with studios, but also with hardware and exclusives and everything else. And there is a feeling you get where it's so big and so hard that maybe in the future it's dominated by only a couple of players. Yeah. And so when you had this variety and you're like, oh, they're going to have a studio too. And whatever, Google's a huge company. So it, uh, it's hard to feel all that bad about it. But more players in the space, sometimes the, the consumer wins in those scenarios. Yeah. And Google often the to, consumer wins in those scenarios. I guess scenarios. they have a bunch of money, but they still got to pick their battles, right? They got to pick their battles. And, and like I said, this might get consolidated into something else but by a different name sure. and the technology shows up in some other place. But I get curious about this stuff. You get them likes of Microsoft and Sony and uh, Amazon and Netflix. And NVIDIA. NVIDIA's in the streaming. They're doing the streaming. The cloud gaming. So I'm not sure where we're at in 2022 because I haven't goofed with it in a while, but... I had some good experiences on Stadia, believe it or not. Yeah. So pour one out. So I might have to pour one out. Hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, Meta's new text to video AI generator is like Dali, but for video. What a terrifying gif yeah. you've provided <laughs> me here, uh, Verge, the Verge.com. Just uh, type the description and the AI generates matching footage. So somebody typed in. Oh my um, God, make a video. The text prompt used to create the video was a teddy bear painting a portrait. Oh my God. Will, don't do this to me. Oh, AI yes. text image generators have been making headlines in recent months, but researchers are already moving on to the next frontier. AI text to video generators. A new system called Make a Video. Of course, it comes from Meta as well. Mm. Hey, Meta, make a video. Here's what's in my imagination. Oh. Here's what's in my... Uh, Dark, twisted fantasy. Uh-huh. That's a record. Yeah. That's a record. By yay? That's a, that's a yay reference. Yeah. Thought I might have gone over your head, but then no, I, no. I forgot. You know me. I, I forgot you were a uh, college dropout uh, yeah. polo backpack. I forgot you've been around that long. Well, I watched the documentary. That's it. <laughs> I forgot you've been around that long. I forgot how old you were. And, you know, I look across and I see uh, youthful radiance. Exuberance? Yeah, but then you remind me that you're 46 and surprises me every time. <laughs> yeah. Surprise me every time. Uh-huh. Gen generative AI research is pushing creative expression forward by giving people tools to quickly and easily create new content, said Meta. With just a few words of lines of text, make a video can bring imagination to life and create one-of-a-kind videos full of vivid colors and landscapes, said Mark. So there's more examples here. Okay, let's see them. Let's see what we got. So there's no sound. A young couple walking in heavy rain. Oh, they're like merged together. <laughs> <laughs> but it's how do they do that? Nightmare it's fuel. Like, um... The ground's wet, and then Nine. they have the reflection. Yeah, look at the left foot on the person on the left. And if they are they forwards or backwards? Look at the left foot. Oh. Oh, ow, right there. What? <sighs> Unicorns running along a beach. Wow, man, this is some alien stuff. Yeah. Scary futures. It's like they copy and paste, too. Scary futures. And then the, the bear one. What is what, Will? You know what it reminds me of? You know what this reminds me of, Will? Hmm? You go to the supermarket. And what do you buy at the supermarket? You know? In the produce section. Are you really buying a blueberry or an apple? Uh, Are you buying those things? Uh, you're, what are you talking about? You're talking about GMOs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm talking about how you buy it based on appearance. You can't taste it. Okay. It, it's crazy. It's well, you can. <laughs> wow. If you want a blueberry, you can absolutely try and taste it. No rinse? Uh, I don't know. You just, I wouldn't do that. But I know some people would. 
Well, you go to Costco, they'll give you, and then you go to the frozen section, they'll give you a sample. But sure. I'm saying that people, they, their, your interpretation of uh, quality gets easily skewed by the rearranging of characteristics. So by this, I mean, you see a nice shiny apple. You're like, that's a good apple. Hmm. But the attribute, a major attribute that matters is what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. How, I mean, that's the effect of the food ultimately. But the real thing has limitations. Uh, whatever, it's more expensive or the yield is lower. Or you go try and get wild blueberries. It costs you $28 for a, a Tim Hortons cup full of them. Mm -hmm. That's where this comes in. This is the equivalent. It doesn't taste as good. Something's wrong about it, but it's so damn easy comparative to, I mean, it's not easy, uh -huh. but it will be at a point. Yeah. Like, why would you capture anything? It's so much work. And you'll be like, no, it's the real thing. And no one will care because the memes will be blowing up and everybody will be chomping down on shiny apples. And it's so convincing. It's convincing enough. Yeah. It's like better than stock footage. You're, you're going to just be able to plug in whatever scenario you want. Oh, God. For some reason, the um, filter that's on this one makes it very unsettling. Like a 90s... You remember uh, Max yeah. Headroom? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of that. Oh, Just yeah. Just like this unsettling Listen, image. Maybe we're overreacting well. But maybe we're not. <laughs> so let's leave it at that. I don't even know. Let's leave it at that. Who oh, knows what's going to so happen creepy. here? Dolly, AI, this and that. We're not going to... We're not shutting anything down, so it doesn't matter. But like, is, is, is our future full of teddy bears painting teddy bears? Probably. Oh. Probably. Can it not? No, probably. Oh. You're done. Okay. You're done, bud. Today's sponsor, Audible. Why don't you go and listen to the good stuff? Why don't you go and listen to McConaughey? They're always suggesting him there in the corner. And look at the, the deep thought. Let me see if I can pull it off. It's like this. It's like... That's the face you do. Uh, you would have that face if you were writing your memoir. A bit of a smolder. And honestly, I'm kind of curious what's going on in his memoir. Yeah. I have been an Audible user for man since the internet seriously and i've been building out my audible library and if i were to go back and have to buy each one of those books in that library individually it would have cost me a lot more than the membership i'm a huge proponent of audiobooks because we got busy lifestyles man hmm. and it's one of those ways you can still hit those titles you're interested in or reach back for a little nostalgia or some, you know, I like to get into the uh, philosophy books and things like that. I know I wouldn't find the time, so I'm able to dip in through the multitasking with Audible. I recommend you give it a shot as well. Audible. Audible offers incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries, motivation, wellness, business, and more. I'm currently listening to Tuesdays with Maury while I'm on a walk with Otis. I just put on my headphones and go. Let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try it free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash later or text later to 500-500. That's audible.com slash later or text later to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Audible.com slash later. We're also sponsored by ZocDoc. It's about time the doctor-patient relationship and experience hit the web because guys like Will have been putting off the variety of checkups and things that they need to ensure that their system is running properly. I'm talking about your system, your body, Will. Mm. I've seen it over the years breaking down. Yeah. And frankly, I'm sick of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Start taking care. No, listen, I'm exaggerating, but it, it, it is true. A big part of the reason people don't go through the process is because it's there's friction over there. ZocDoc aims to remove that friction by making a doctor's appointment very similar to, I don't know, everything else you do online, whether you need primary care, a dentist, a dermatologist, etc. 
You can find a specialist, you can find somebody nearby, and you can read their reviews from other users so you know what you're about to get involved in. Maybe you're wondering about wait times, uh, personality, bedside manner, and things like this, but it's all right there. It's all on ZocDoc. It's thousands of providers in one app. It's time this process comes into the future. It's happening now. It's ZocDoc. Find and review local doctors. Read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. Go to ZocDoc.com, find the doctor that is right for you, and book an appointment, in person or remotely, that works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc. Its mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few steps. Go to ZocDoc.com dot com slash later and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash later. ZocDoc dot com slash later. How many cups of coffee should you drink per day according to science? I love these type of things. Yeah. And you the can more read, you know. Well, you could, but you could read one one week and the next week is contradicting the last one. Uh-huh. Like, remember that article you read last week telling you you were drinking just the right amount of coffee? Well, They're like, these new scientists. Yeah, new, new science. Yeah. New studies over here. Yeah. We, <laughs> never mind the old studies. We got a study for you. We got a weekly study. Mm-hmm. Coffee may have health benefits, but we're still figuring out the optimal amount. Well, I'll tell you that my consumption has been going up. I'll tell you that right now. It's been constantly going it's up. It's just been going up. What about you? You, you peeled back. Peeled um, back or are you going I've up? I've stayed consistent. You're a consistent Maybe type. a cup a day. Cup a day. Two cups? Huh? A cup is small, Will. A cup is smaller than you think. A cup of coffee. Yeah. I think you're two cups minimum. Yeah. Okay, sure. Recent study draws from the UK Biobank, where the average age is 58. Slightly more than half the participants are women, and roughly 95% are white. On average, the researchers were able to follow participants for 12 years after they answered a question about how much coffee they drink. If we look at the death from all causes, death from all causes, people who drank two to three cups of coffee per day had the lowest risk. <gasps> okay. And that applies whether they were drinking ground instant or decaf. For cardiovascular disease, those drinking one cup a day had the lowest risk. But for arrhythmia, regular heartbeat, the sweet spot appeared to be four to five cups. Whoa. And the arrhythmia results, decaf coffee was not associated with a reduction in risk. So it's caffeine related in that case. Plenty of limitations in this study, as there would be in any study. This group of middle-aged British folks may not represent the rest of the world particularly well. Uh, Income, social class, and perceived health risks can contribute to that choice. Just to name a few, Brits also tend to drink a lot of instant coffee and espresso, it turns out. Researchers. There's like tea in there as well. (laughs) They're loving the tea. Yeah. Yeah, and I know. How much? I'm sure. Mix. I'm sure it's part of the study. You have them both, I'm guessing. Uh, But anyway, uh, they looked at dozens of previous coffee studies and concluded that people who drink coffee have lower risks of cardiovascular disease, disease, including strokes, some cancers, and some liver and gastrointestinal disorders. I don't know. Listen, let me tell you something. Well, I think it's like a lot of things. Okay. Where, I mean, a study is nice. I uh, like, you know, study's good. Get a bigger number. Sure. There's like a grounded Yeah. But, base. but I think people can overdo it as well. And I think you kind of got to everybody's going to have a different tolerance level and it's going to have different effects on different people. Mm-hmm. You know, there's an effect or, or, or there's not for people who have a higher tolerance, like as far as the physical effect of it. Yeah. You know, I'm sure if you, if you right now, if you just sat there and drank 10 cups of coffee, what, what are you going to be like? No, I wouldn't be sitting. That's for sure. What are you going to be doing? What's going to happen to your body? Yeah. Specifically. I'll just be buzzing. Like, you know, I feel like it's not going to be healthy for you. Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like. Yeah. So. But it is. uh, But I feel like I can drink coffee forever. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. 10 might not do anything for you. You know, I, (laughs) I go up, I go down, I drink this, I drink that. And I yeah. try to figure it out. I feel like, you know what I feel like? Well, I can eat my way out of coffee. 
just uh, eat a giant burrito? If I'm if I got too much coffee going on, I feel like I can eat something, and then I'm back to level playing field. Mm. But maybe not. Maybe not yeah, at a certain point. I feel that way too. Sometimes it kind of. I don't know the science, but it it uh, dilutes it a little bit. We don't know the science, Will. Well, nobody does because, like I told you, we got a new study every couple of days, yeah. and they're going to say, well, yeah, you're not going to get the arrhythmia, but you're going to get this one instead. And so, At least here it says four cups or less to be safe. Yeah, they say coffee consumption for non, oh, non-pregnant non adults as well. Yeah, that obviously pregnant's different. FDA has cited 400 milligrams per day of caffeine as an amount not generally associated with dangerous negative effects. Yeah. 400 milligrams. And, of course, keep in mind, it's not just coffee that contains caffeine. A lot of those drinks with the fancy graphics, when you go to the convenience store or the gas station, you're getting, there's many ways to get caffeine. So you yeah. can keep that into the equation as well. But whatever. Shout out to the coffee drinkers. Maybe it's not that bad. Might After all. Yeah. I saw this tweet from Elon Musk. Cybertruck will be waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat so it can cross rivers, lakes, and even seas that aren't too choppy. Needs to be able to get from Starbase to South Padre Island, which requires crossing the channel. Is this, is this legit? Is this for real? Well, I, I'm having a hard time reading this one. It's all, it's very recent, has a ton of likes, some retweets. Actually, yeah. Well, we've heard, we've actually seen like Tesla's driving through pits of water. Mm hmm and surviving so but you see the top response to this tweet here dog you can't even make a car trunk rainproof i'm not drowning yeah. my family in a coffin from an n64 game <laughs> oh, oh, oh. dog jeez it's jack all together ring in the thunder here it's true what level of confidence are you going to need to start crossing a channel in your cyber truck where you're like yeah i feel so I feel super confident in that. Hold on, I just want right, to... Whatever, it'd be, it'd be very cool if they can pull it off, do a demo, and I still think people are probably going to be a bit terrified of attempting such things. You're trying to see how far this is? It's far enough. Well, you got to go South Padre Island directions to Starbase, right? Um, where is Starbase? It must be. In Starbase is tiny. Yeah, it's right? tiny. So you have to type it in. You're not going to see it. Can I actually search for it? You think? Well, yeah, of course. Directions and then Starbase. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, my goodness gracious. What? That's Starbase production site. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I guess they got to cross the, the. Where are you going? Where are you going, Will? Every time you open Google Maps, I have no idea what's going on. Where are you I just going? want to see how far it is. It's not far, but and and you and you're protected in the South Bay there. Okay, yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Are are you are you ready to take the cyber truck there? Uh, yeah. You know, some people are gonna try. Good lord, I don't know. You know? I, I'd be happy if the thing was just delivered as a truck. Like, never mind the, the, the boat aspect. Uh, that'll be cool if it's a boat, too. Uh, how useful is that, though? Like, okay, scroll up. I think it's very Waterproof useful. Waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat. Yeah. Briefly. So, like, flood scenarios. Yeah. Or, like, um, Cross really, river. yeah. Cross the river, the river, lake, or even seas that aren't too choppy. My God, this is going to be all quite interesting. Yeah. What if you're at, happen. you know, the Everglades? You need a boat license for that? Definitely. You do, right? <laughs> Good Lord. Um, let's see if anyone else has any. Can I get a, little, a few more replies on this? to see? I just want to see if everyone's believing it or not. And you got to scroll down more. Show more replies. There you go. It's going to be what? A bunch of memes now? Yeah. Like, what is that? Is that AI generated? Uh what what's going on there? Or is that just a boat that looks like a cyber truck? Maybe. Hmm. Man, the replies on an Elon tweet are some of the Yeah, it's it's very memey. Wackiest. Hard to make sense of 
sections of discourse on the entire internet. Maybe the bot will handle the last delivery of the quarter. I can take a guess that there's no stress for, to the end of Q3 having AI date. What? Like what? Are, okay, we're good. I, I hope it's a boat. I hope it's a truck. I hope it's a truck, and I think it'll look good in this studio. So yeah, uh, we'll 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 test it for you. We're gonna go in shallow water at first. Will? Okay, sure. Can you agree? Yeah. Will you drive? I'll definitely drive. Will you pilot this thing. I'll just uh because in the recent video you were flying around. Uh-huh. And you were chatting it up too. Yeah. So what's that about? Um I like driving EVs. They're fun. No, but you were chatting, you were doing all kinds of chatting. So what's that about? <laughs> I did. Well, you told me to end the video. Yeah. And I did. And you're like, hey, so what's so guys, I'm just doing this and that and Oh God. That, you, you don't believe me? You don't No, believe I watched me? the video. You don't believe me? I did it. So I, no, I, I know, but I'm just feeling like you're not believing me right now. No, I... Yeah. You're like, guys, we'll do here. It's like, wow, what happened to this guy? Yeah, who am I? Here he is, right here. There's rarely any glare, and somehow they just made it really anti-reflective. There we go. Okay. You were talking about the reflections and stuff? We're going to launch it. Yeah. So my initial impression Listen to this, guys. is that it's like... You're driving on a cloud. It's super smooth, and it's almost weightless. You guys you gotta get... go. You guys gotta go watch this. It's wild what's going on in here. Yeah. He's just driving. Will is just driving around. Yeah. In an electric Porsche, and he's going through the wilderness, and he's launching it, and he's he's breaking it down. It's incredible stuff. It's a huge development. And it's the latest video on Unbox Therapy, so I don't know. Leave this show right now and go there. Mm -hmm. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You don't seem convinced, Will. <laughs> no, no. It's uh, It was a fun video. Yeah. And the next video, I think, is... Are you better. hoping to the do more evening. of this stuff? Um, no, I'm good. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> The Cybertruck, I'll definitely... Cybertruck, you'll do. Okay. To drive All right, that. you're waiting for the Cybertruck. That's sure. fair. Or maybe it'll be a Polestar 3 electric SUV teased ahead of an upcoming reveal. Yeah. The 2023 Polestar 3 is set to become the brand's third model when it debuts October 12th. That is quite soon. Mm. Its electric motors will dispense up to 510 horsepower. That's not bad. Mm. It's a hatchback? Uh, yeah. Sure looks like it. In the form of a SUV. Oh, it's in, they call it an SUV? Yeah. Polestar's been teasing the third model, aptly called the 3, since last December when it showed an image of the electric crossover in a pixelated wrap. This is one of those electric cars you can actually get. You go look it up, you can just order it. I don't know why more people don't have these. I don't know if they're any good. I I don't know why they never put one in our studio. I'd like to inspect it. Yeah. I mean, the I think the Polestar 2 was going for 60K Canadian or 65. Or so was the... It's affordable. Oh, okay. It's affordable. Okay. Um, but but don't you agree? You just don't see that many of them. And they they seem to be available. And there's just not a tremendous amount of buzz. Yeah. I wonder why. the general public. Because they are cool-looking cars, but I've never driven one. So I'm no, not too sure. I know. Never. Like, I think you could just order it right now. I don't you even... could, yes. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I feel like even if you go on Auto Trader or something, you can just, like, they're available. And they, I, I don't know. We should get one. Plus, they have this partnership with Volvo, and they've been making cars forever. So the whole thing seems just too feasible. I, I just want to know why people, what people are avoiding here. Should we um, get Let, to the bottom of it? Let's get to the bottom of it. Investigative. Uh, you can. That's the one I want right there. Yeah. Yeah, that one. The concept O2. Oh, okay, concept. Not anytime soon. Yeah, you can. Will, you can check. You can take it out on the road and tell us about the reflections. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I can say I'm driving on a cloud instead of driving a cloud. That's what you say. You say I'm driving on a cloud and there's no reflections. That was the key with your feedback. 
<laughs> You're confused about that? No, no, no. I was I'm looking not... at like the. No, I'm not confused. Flash. I'm just I'm just letting the people know the the key takeaways. Yeah. Cloud reflections. That's all you got. Cloud reflections and launch. That uh -huh. was that was. Go watch it. You guys, you guys need to. Will's looking really comfy in there. You got the seatbelt on. You got the Alcantara steering wheel. I don't know. People should see that. Well, I'll definitely drive it again. It's a cool car. Polestar also dropped some information about the three's powertrain. The company confirmed that in an initial launch, every three will feature a rear bias dual motor powertrain, which will include electric torque vectoring via dual clutch system on the rear motor. Polestar 3 will also come with performance package where the motors will produce combined 510 horsepower and 671 pound-feet of torque. Polestar did not reveal how much the crossover will make as standard, but every three will come with adaptive dual chamber air suspension and active dampers. What do you think of this? Yeah. I Just like the it. look alone? I it like looks it. great. I like it, man. I like it. I got no problems with it, and now I really feel the need to get to the bottom of what's going on with this brand. Yeah. What's going on with this brand? Deep dive. Viral video shows shark swimming in flooded streets of Fort Myers amid Hurricane Ian. Hurricane down there. Shout out anybody who was affected down in Florida. Uh, these things happen. I think it could have been worse. I guess you could say that anytime. But my understanding is it's kind of lost some steam now. I'm sure it impacted tons of people. I'm sure it destroyed stuff and everything else yeah. widespread power outages flooding oh man there's like a body there okay well yeah, yeah my uh sister's there right now in orlando oh wow they just went to disney world well at least in, in orlando she's in the middle of the state not not right by the mm -hmm. coast so yeah but the hurricane is supposed to head right to orlando so uh they said it's gonna die down so We'll see. That's what tends to happen when it goes over land. Yeah. So, so but anyway, but she's so, sending me updates and it's just like. So did you send her this clip? Like, did you send her this clip of uh, the shark swimming around right in town? I didn't. Mm. I don't think she's close to it. No, she's not. <laughs> so do we have a video? Can we watch it? Uh, Yeah. Okay, here we go. Wow, that's crazy. Just swimming around. Just sharks swimming through the streets. They're like, these are our streets now. Yeah. It's crazy how there's supposed to be cars there and an actual street, but now there's a shark. That's how the floods work there. Yeah. Wow. Just take over. Nature takes over, doesn't it? Very quickly, Nature yes. takes what it wants. Yeah. Nature goes, it's a nice little town you got here. Yeah. yeah we're, we're, we don't care. We a got lot of it. alligators. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Alligators galore. The U.S. Border Patrol said 20 migrants were missing after their boat sank. Four Cubans swimming to shore in the Florida Keys. Bad timing. Bad timing for that. Yeah. Yeesh. Extremely dangerous hurricane made landfall after 3 p.m. on the barrier island of Cayo Costa, west of the city of Fort Myers. Ian is set to affect several million people across Florida and in the southeast eastern states of Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, good luck to everybody. Uh, hopefully it already passed by you and everything is cool and you're all good. And, uh, hopefully these sharks go back into the ocean there and give you your streets back. Mm -hmm. No, they fight the alligators. What? Yeah. They have a one-on-one. -on -one. They sound like one of those cheapo action movies. <laughs> sharks versus alligators. Uh -huh. Yeah. Coolio. Yeah. Coolio, uh, is dead at 59 years old. I saw this on Twitter, mm. and I mean, this is not a person that I, I, I've uh, I've been following closely recently, but massive, hit, massive hits, hit, mm -hmm. gangsters, gangsters paradise, yeah, oh, spending most of our lives uh -huh. living in this gangsters paradise. I mean, they, that's like Dangerous iconic. Minds. It's so iconic of that time period. Michelle Pfeiffer. Well, I see where you're going with it, but <laughs> it's, it's a great movie. It's so iconic of that time. You saw Weird Al posting about it. He had the oh yeah parody Amish, of it. Amish Paradise. Yeah, he had the parody of it. He posted a picture of himself uh, hugging Coolio. But yeah, man, just wow, what an era. Tommy Boy Records. What year was that? Well. Gangsta's Paradise. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death. 95. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. And the video too. Yeah. With the shadows and things like Very that. Very ominous. Oh yeah. Um Coolio's talent manager tells TMZ we're saddened by the loss of our dear friend and client Coolio, who passed away Wednesday afternoon. He touched the world with the gift of his talent and will be missed profoundly. Law enforcement sources tell TMZ no drugs or drug paraphernalia were found at the scene of Coolio's death. An autopsy and toxicology test will be used to determine an official cause. Yeah, so this happened, uh, what, 4 p.m. yesterday, I guess? Yeah. 59. Not, uh, not super old. No. But, you know, I, man, uh, the, the, the. The heart, the heart attacks, the it can happen. Uh -huh. You never know. You you wait for the autopsy report, see if anything else was going on. But, uh, yeah, R.I.P. Coolio. Yeah. All right, last one. Last one is P80 Record Factory Kit. Have you seen this before? I have it's not. Spying, Teenage yeah. Engineering is back. Yeah. That's going to be pricey. What are we doing here? Not too bad. What are we doing here? So this little record player allows you to make records, <sighs> like instantly. What? Yeah. Make your own vinyl records. P80 Record Factory is a compact and portable record cutter made in collaboration with Yuri Suzuki. Engrave and playback five-inch discs with ultra analog lo-fi sound. Simply plug in any audio device to the 3.5 millimeter audio, imp audio input and cut your own record in an instant? Yeah. It's that simple for 150 bucks? Let's make some records. Let's cut some records, Will. Oh, look at the little kid. That's a cool photo, man. Yeah. Very cool photo. That's like, uh, that's you. Uh, that would be- Back that's, in the day. That would absolutely be me right there. If uh, I had a little gadget like this. So I plug in my audio source, I cut the record. Ultra Lo-Fi Dreams, experience the warmth of Lo-Fi audio, play back your unique cuts, and give your favorite seven inch records new life with ultra analog sound quality. The built-in speakers allow you to listen directly from your P PO80 or connect an external speaker through the 3.5 millimeter audio plug. As you go, play some demos. You have three demos here, let's play it. Actually, that is very lo-fi. You're sending it to some speaker somewhere, not my headphones, but I can already tell it's funky. Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. This is great stuff. This is a fun... That one's even more lo-fi. Super scratch. I feel like you would experiment with this, you know? Well, sure, because what you can do is it's almost like acts like a filter if you want to sample something, make something seem older than it actually is. Uh-huh. You could take a sound that you created now with modern tools and instantly yeah. change the attributes. Now, obviously, you can do this in software and there's other ways, but there's something about the tangible. There's something about the digital to analog and back to digital. It's all fun stuff. And of course, the design work. I mean, you, you don't even have to worry about that. We talk about so teenage cool. engineering. Yeah. You don't even have to. You don't even have to worry about it. It has like a Japanese old school vibe too. Well, you got Yuri Suzuki yeah. involved over there. Yeah, the packaging. <sighs> got the orange in there, and look how happy that guy is with the headphones on. Welcome to the mastering machine. This will help you get better sound quality when making records for your PO80. Oh, this is an actual guide for how to master your own records. You, mm -hmm. you can pass them. Oh, imagine that for a gift. Here's a record I made for you. That what? That is so cool. What? You made me a record? How'd you make... What? You made me a record? It's like a... It's like a retro futuristic mixtape. You hand it over. You're like, that's right. That's yours now. Dude, I feel like this is your product. Oh, it's my product? Yeah. Dang. I feel like you would have a good time doing something. Well, like I'll, I'll make a video for sure. I'll make a record. No and doubt. then, uh, no doubt, the record you could just uh, give it off to one of our viewers, I guess. I think I'm gonna give it off. Yeah, <laughs> some sort of raffle. I'm gonna give it off. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, unbelievable show today. <laughs> I, uh, I love the segment, uh, on your experience in the latest unbox therapy video. That was my favorite. 
portion of today's show because okay. why? Because your confidence level through the roof. Well, yeah, if you're <laughs> driving that thing through the roof. Super fun. It's the intro of the video. Yeah. It's I, you launching the car and I then it goes into, Super like, Saiyan. Yeah. Which has always been a dream of yours. Definitely, yeah. And I achieved it. And I driving a Porsche. I felt like I made the reference too. Did Kirk pick up on the reference and then he put it in the video? Is did that he? I don't know. I feel like Maybe. I made the reference. I feel like you did too. Like while we were shooting. I just don't know if I made the reference at that moment or he had been holding on to it trying to make you go super sane in one way or the other yeah they but they've been trying to do that in for a while remember the last time we were doing that video and you were like and they were going too far and you're like no i will not you were doing you were a game streamer oh yeah the skit yes <laughs> yeah. and you were pissed off with them remember that i wasn't pissed you were a little bit pissed <laughs> off there's a lot of stuff going on. Listen, guys, we can't we can't tell you every story here. We're limited for time, but go watch at least watch the intro on the latest Unbox Therapy video because Will is just shining. He knocked it out of the park. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you very much for joining here today. Uh, keep it keep it four cups or less when it comes to the coffee. All right. I don't know. That's what they said. Yeah. I'll do whatever you guys do. Like, listen, do what you gotta do. You know you. You know you. Sure. You know you better than he knows you. Uh, definitely. Later, guys. Later. Thanks. Later.